All right, we're here for another episode of Dropping Gems, the last one of the month. We got a friend of the show, Lucas Lennon, here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Asia. Uh, I want to give you guys a little intro about Lucas. Now, he is a young independent artist manager for Lucas Lennon Management. Currently works with Ezra, jo- Ezra Jordan and three-time Grammy winner Chin Ejedi. I pronounced that right, correct? On the, on the dot. There we go. And uh, he's a founder and lead principal of the Homebody Online Music Festival, which had 100% of the proceeds go to three different charities. Again, welcome to Dropping Gems. Uh, I want to start way at the beginning, before anything with Homebody Festival. When you first came up listening to music, um, I always ask everyone this because I feel like your your intro to music affects how you kind of you know maneuver in the music business or how you look at things. So what, who's that? Who's like your first favorite artist? <laughs> well, um, I my dad, and this is like if you've met my dad, you'd know this. He is the biggest Beatles fan in the entire world. Um, he actually, and this is like I'm not. I'm not joking about this. He wanted to call me John Paul George Rinko. <laughs> I was like, no chance, no chance. Oh, yo, yo. Yeah. So they they agreed on Lennon being my middle name, which is what I go go by in the the industry. So the Beatles is kind of like the only band I knew. I think up until I was like three or four. Damn. Yeah, and then I mean, also actually, Oasis, Wonderwall, you know, classic. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I think when I got older, I started listening to like kind of anything that I was, my parents showed me from like, or like what's on the radio, like Avril Lavigne, Jet. Uh, I was a big, you know, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC fan. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like a little bit of everything. And as I got older, I started, you know, diving into my own or like look finding my own new music as well as like looking back at like you know 60s 70s 50s all you know each decade um and now it's like kind of a mix of everything i'd say when when was the point when i guess the old music and the new music came together because when i came up i was i was more into like older music and i it took a while for me to kind of listen to current music my parents were all listening to old gospel so i was listening to 90s gospel in like mm-hmm. the mid 2000s unaware that new music was coming out um and you kind of start off with old music too when was the point when you were like i'm listening to more new music than old music i would probably say it was i think it was like grade five or grade six maybe mm-hmm. my first ipod or sorry my my dad got my mom an ipod and she never used it and it was like the old school one. It's like a brick. Like no joke. It's a legit. Was it was it the the black and white one? Uh no, it was like all it was all white with like buttons around the like the the spinny yeah. uh uh silver on the back. It was like it's like this thick. I'm not even joking. Nah, I remember I know what you're talking about, but yeah. things are huge. Yeah, and it had like one gigabyte of storage <laughs> like that. <laughs> like super small um and i think i started like going through like all my parents cds and then like i started like going to like hmv and and buying cds then and like i was a huge green day fan um in grade five and six like that like basket case what a track um but i think it's a different time yeah i'd say grade five and six was probably like the start of like hearing new music and and i think grade five and six is also the i guess the time period when you start to like buy cds as a kid i guess what like when we were kids obviously kids now don't buy cds but when we were kids that was a time when you would buy cds because i remember when i was in elementary school and middle school if we did secret santa i would always ask for a cd that was like my go-to ask because it was 10 bucks and i would say whatever sort of cds out right now get me one of those so that makes perfect perfect sense yeah um and was actually another one now i'm thinking about it which one Simple plan. The album it was like no, it was like no helmets, no pads. Something. Yeah, I remember that one. Yo, my school had a real beef. It was like it was a Blink versus Simple Plan, and we were a Blink school. Yeah, we were we were a Blink I school. Both. I had love for Blink yeah. for uh, some Forty One, Simple Plan, all of them. Oh man, that was a time. That was a time. Um, talk about your, your intro into the music industry. Like, how do you know how old you were when you thought this might be something I'll do for a living? And then when you did get in, what were the steps that you took to be like, okay, let me further myself and take this more seriously? 
Yeah. I, well, <laughs> it's kind of funny because I, so I took, I went to, I went to high school. I was going to go to Western. I okay. Started, and um, right before I put in like the final deposit, I was like, this like, I'm not happy. Like, it is not me. I'm not going like great school. Like I, I've, I've been times it's unbelievable. The course of wicked but i was like i just it didn't feel right okay. so i uh basically went to my parents at the time and i was like okay so i want to take a year off this is what i want to do so i showed them kind of like a year plan of, you know i wanted to travel i was going to work i was going to start a hockey team i was going to do a bunch of these things and they're like okay if you commit to this and do it we have no problem with it i was going to take another i was going to actually get, i was going to take a course as well um, at Ryerson, actually. Big shout out Ryerson. Yeah, uh, Ryerson, great school. So I was doing a lot of traveling. I was visiting a friend in LA and he was there for music. And at the time I wanted to be like a film director or in the entertainment industry. I was like acting a bit, very short lived. Don't talk about that ever again. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, it was very, very, that LA trip with my buddy was very um, music oriented. Like the second night we were like at Sway Lee's house. Wow. Like I, I was like, what? Like, I'm like, um, I went to high school and it's just like bring, bring me to these random places. We're like hanging out with like a Madonna's producer and it was just like insane. And I was like, like really cool. So I. After that trip, I was like, I kind of want to get into the music industry. Like, I love the the atmosphere of just like people wanting to create and the the, the ability music has to like change one's emotions with like the snap of a finger. Um, so I tried to start DJing because I, I was actually I was a big Kygo fan um, when I was younger. Before before he was actually he blew up, which is kind of cool. say a word. Um, and I realized I have no talent, no musical talent at all. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I can't play any piano, guitar, nothing like that. Can't sing. Um, I tried to produce and after like, I think a month, I was like, okay, you know what? Like, not that like, I, I don't condone like giving up or anything, but I just knew myself. I'm like, this is not me. Like, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. So I was thinking of other ways of getting into the music industry. Management came up. And it was right around Canadian music, or no, it was right around uh, North by Northeast. Okay. Um, and one of my uncles, he's a he's a producer, a, a Canadian producer, and I sat down with him at a bar, and one of my dad's best friends, who's actually an artist manager, and we were chatting, and they're like, you know what? Here's an all access pass, and you just shadow us for the entire week and decide what you what you want to do. Like they were like kind of pushing me towards it, even though everyone mm -hmm. like don't do it because it's it's not lucrative. There's no money. You're gonna lose your hair, all that jazz, um, which is has started for the record. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I went and it was just it was so cool to like be going to these events where everyone there loved music, and they weren't like people like you know big A list celebrities. It was like people that you know book were booking agents or publicists. And it, it kind of like opened my eyes, like, whoa, there's so much more in the music industry than just the artist, just the music. And I enjoyed that. And uh, I remember when I uh, told my uncle that I wanted to get be a manager, he's like, okay, so do you have business cards? I was like, no, like I, I, just, I just decided today. And he's like, <laughs> oh, well, you better get business cards. We have, we have uh, an event to go to tonight. And I was like, wow. Uh, or it was like the, the next day. So mm -hmm. I stayed up till like five in the morning designing a really shitty business. Can I, can I swear? Is that yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. A really shitty business card and went to Staples and had to like personally like hand cut them individually. Wow. Uh, it was pretty funny. They were terrible. I don't think I got a call <laughs> from anyone, but... Um, I got their e I got their emails and their business cards, and that was kind of the start of it. And I was like, I really like this, and, and the rest is history. Damn, that that's great to hear because music is one of those industries 
where people are in it because they love music. No matter what level they're at, no matter you know how lucrative their business is, the actual love for music is what brings them in. That sounds like kind of what made you want to do this. You're like, I gotta get into music and and the entertainment industry somehow. I gotta get in. So yeah. that having having people again who are not in front of the camera, but having people who have that passion behind the scenes is super super important i want to talk about the homebody festival once again love that name love love that name for the festival thank you um, we, we thank you yeah yes, no, tell, us, tell us about the name before we get anything tell us about how you guys came up with that name well we had a we like had like a list of like 15 names mm -hmm. um and we like weren't um we kept going we had like a bunch and homebody was like always there and we kept going back to it if you're like, oh, maybe homebody or like, you know, we had like an, like before, the, I think there is a stay home fest now. Okay. At the time we we're talking about, you know, a stay, it's like calling it stay home fest off of way home. Um, you know, Couchella, a bunch okay. of people. And uh, once we, we hit a point where we are like, okay, we're actually going to like, this is going to be like legit. Like we have a, mm. a lot of artists that we're going to get. We felt that we had to go more original rather than, you know, going off of like an already uh, uh, named festival like Coachella or Wayo. So we are like, you know, let's let's go with Homebody and it just kind of it, it fit. And when we got the first draft of like the design, we were all like, this is awesome. Fire. Like, we love it. We love it. No, it worked out perfectly and that that name is especially because it's unique where when you when you hear that name you're like okay this seems like uh, something at, at home but it doesn't it doesn't sound like you're at home because you don't want to be because homebody is, a, is you know a term we use for people who are like you know they choose to stay home they're mm -hmm. cultural at home and i thought that's perfect for the festival talk about i guess starting to put it together because i know when corona hit it was like you know explosion in people's minds of what the hell do we do and especially when we didn't know how long we would be inside for and you know now that we were into stage three people are outside people are at bars but months ago um there was no way to foresee this so talk about you know that first conversations when you were like we want to do something yeah well i i remember it vividly because it was the day ezra released his debut ep it was april 9th mm -hmm. um we did an Instagram live show with Tyler Shaw. Okay. And I was watching it and it was basically just like Tyler and, and Ezra chatting and uh, Ezra playing a song or I think, yeah, he played one or two songs and kept chatting and that was it. And I was like, this is so cool. This is awesome. Like, we'd love to do something like this on Instagram, like but with Ezra. Um, and then the next day he had a, it was a pay what you can show online. Okay. It was the Uncanceled Music Festival. Okay. Each artist played, it was like 30, 30 to 60 minutes of their choice. They play their song and everyone can like tip throughout the show and, and chat and all that jazz. Okay. It was cool, but like the quality and the their duration kind of bugged me personally because I was like, mm. one thing you're seeing an artist for 30 minutes live, mm. another one it's, you know, on a laptop like you, no one has the attention span to yeah properly be like fully you know immersed and attentive to the artist right mm -hmm. so after those two i, I pitched to ezra's like hey like let's 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 have a little instagram festival like with 10 of your friends and you know maybe we, we can get you guys paid for this right we started thinking of a bunch of ideas and i brought uh, my two interns into the idea and we all loved it but then we we're like you know what we want to get back to actually playing live shows in front of people so we we're like why don't rather than you know the artist making money like let's let's see what artists would be interested in raising money for covid okay and once i brought uh funny enough my two interns are both named nick <laughs> so i was like nick and nick um let's let's figure this out and they had a friend, they had two friends actually, a guy named Daniel and a girl named Karen who helped kind of get the, the branding and the design. And Daniel actually has some uh, history, some experience in putting on festivals. Okay. So he came in and we started chatting and one thing led to another, 
one to another. And then we're like, okay, we're doing two weekends with 50 plus artists on YouTube. And we're like, wow, that that escalated really quickly, but let's mm-hmm. do it. Um, and that was kind of like the start of it. It was just like the, the small idea which kept growing and, you know, it was like a domino effect. And we all were on board, we we're all super excited. We all had like different jobs. Um, working on different things and it just we all clicked and it worked yeah it did it did feel like it was an avalanche I feel like that's a good word to use because yeah. I'm I don't remember when I first heard of it I think maybe you might have mentioned the thing that you guys want to do something and I know Danny had had we can talk about a little bit but um whenever I first heard of it before it was announced it was it was not as big as it was when it was announced and I remember seeing you guys post over and over again I said there's another day and another day and another day so um you guys definitely rate raise the bar um basically throughout the whole thing thank you man it was uh well at the end of the day like we all we're all we were all in the same boat where we were like okay we want them to be short and concise we want them to be um entertaining um, and like very laid back where it's like kind of like a, a opening a door like we wanted the mm. we wanted the audience to feel like they were just a fly on the wall of like okay chat mm-hmm. and the the final thing is we wanted it to be a live performance because a, at the time there was a lot of and, and still to this day there's some like events that you see that are already uh, pre-taped mm-hmm for, the, for our um, situation, we're like, we want everything to be live, which was a much larger headache. <laughs> um, but we were like, yeah, we want to give the artist that adrenaline rush of you know playing live. And we want to give the fans that live uh, feeling where it's like, you know, if they mess up or if, if something's going on or they do something that ends up being a lot cooler, it's like, oh, we just saw that live, right? Um, so yeah, I was just like trying to make sure that everything worked out and looked good. Was there was there any festivals that you looked to in terms of an ex- example? I know that there's kind of a couple you said that gave you that spark, but was there, because I feel like in terms of online festivals, this is like, we're in a, we're in a new space. You know, I'm like, when you go online, you see online film festivals or on, like online podcast festivals, like everything going online is again a new a new thing for us so did you have like a festival to look to that had two weekends that had over 50 artists that you could say you know this is how you do it no it was kind of just like we were all learning on the on the fly i mean there was one so noah khan um i don't know if you know that mm-hmm. artist I suppose it's K-A-H-A-N. Yeah, yeah, I know one. Yeah, great, great, great artist. And he had an Instagram festival, Instagram Live Festival. And what he did was, it was called, um, it was like, it was a play on words of Lollapalooza. And then yeah. each stage was like a different room, like COVID. Oh. It was like the, you know, smoke weed in my room stage. Um, like like depression kitchen or something like it was like really it was very funny. oh that's interesting that's funny i might be able to pull it up and show it send it to you later um but that i like i thought that was like really funny and really cool I'm like you know what with that idea was probably something that inspired us as well mm-hmm. to um festivals ezra did but as for like you know doing a festival like you know, there was no festival that was doing two or six days all live 15 minute interview slash performances it was it was first no no you you guys are definitely unique in that and i think that like you know uh knowing how you guys are putting that together i think that maybe that was um to your benefit to not to not think of you know that this is kind of a a new thing and an unknown territory you know Mm. i even to this day, since that's happened, I've seen, you know, award shows be online, a couple festivals online. We've done online performances um, at CGRU, but I haven't seen anyone do two weekends or 50 artists since then. So mm-hmm. I think I think the revolutionary nature of what you guys have done this was probably unknown to you even at the time. Um, and that probably helped you not get like, you know, too scared of the moment uh, that, was, that was coming. Thank you, but we were, we were, I mean, I can't speak for the team, but I was scared of this. <laughs> 
like I actually I'm a kind it's a funny story now um it wasn't funny back back then but day one um after um probably like a week and a half of like you know really understanding the um the platform we were using making sure that all the audio equipment was working properly we did actually a trial run with some of the artists to like make sure that um there if there were any issues we could you know figure it out before rather than mm. the day of. and so it's like i think it's like 30 minutes before day one so we're like super amped really nervous okay. last and we're like okay let's set everything up so we can go into the platform um set up ezra stuff and as was like my audio is not working i was like what do you mean, <laughs> what do you mean your audio is not working? it was working all this week he's like I, I don't know like it's just not working so he like tries a bunch of different things and we tried different things and like now it's like getting to the wire where it's like 10 minutes before the show we're like oh my goodness we haven't even started and we're already gonna come to and fall. like what's gonna oh my god oh my gosh as is like uh he had like a backup piano he's like mm. fuck it like we'll just deal with this tomorrow we'll figure this out grabs the other one and just puts it down and like that worked and like okay wow take wow. a breath it worked day two the same thing happened with the new piano. Oh my goodness. You gotta be kidding me. We're, and what was worse, this happened five minutes before. Holy. So we ended up, I'm like, we, we can't catch a break. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh my God. Like, that must've yeah, been, that must've yeah. been ter- that must've been terrifying. That must've been terrifying. Yeah. Oh, it was like actually, that that was probably like the worst five minutes of the entire weekend because that went wrong the we had like a little video at the beginning where it was like welcome to, you know day one of home Ballroom music festival and then like some music playing in the background um the video that was playing was um said welcome to homebody day three which is like a little thing perfect was, you know it's day two so anyway and the third is we had this thing called um, uh, what? Like it was kind of like a have you heard? West Coast Nuggies? Okay. Like chicken, chicken uh, nuggies that we would basically send to an artist, and Ezra and him or her would eat the eat the uh, the West Coast Nuggies together. Okay. Uh, Zoom. So it's kind of like you know a little funny thing of them yeah. like, eating chicken nuggets because you know they're all like you know grown ass humans eating nuggets right you know love nuggets for the record and west coast nuggies amazing i spent way too much money there anyway um i got a text from the guy that runs uh west coast and he's like yeah we just sent off the the nuggies they should be there in like 15 minutes and i'm like that's for tomorrow not today <laughs> so like, like Yo! things in like five minutes just like and there's like there's only one big issue it was like oh, yeah. two other things just kind of like added on top of it yeah um and yeah it was it was a headache i mean we got we got the nuggets so mm-hmm. it was just nice but it was uh very stressful I, c- I can imagine i can imagine what was the biggest i guess surprise not like you know you just mentioned a bunch of surprises so not one of those but in terms of that you you didn't think this would be this hard to do or you you know you didn't think you would have to do this to get the festival done something that kind of came out nowhere you're like oh i didn't know we needed to do this um i think the biggest surprise i would say is i guess figuring out um how to make everything look as professional as it could be okay um because i thought that would have been really hard um not like sorry not really hard just a lot of work um but we had um, her name's karen and i'm blanking she has a crazy last name and i always butcher it so i'm not gonna even try i'll say karen g <laughs> um, here we go and she uh is unbelievable like unbelievable damn she she made all of our, our branding stuff um, oh and awesome overlays and all that all that jazz and like without her i don't think we would have looked even as close to what we did like branding wise down 
and I was so yeah I was like I think my my biggest thing was to make, try and look as professional as you could be and she just hit it out of the park so big shout out to Karen big shout out to Karen um, what was your favorite part of the festival that, when the festival was actually on is there a moment where you're like oh this is cool um, there was look there was a lot of moments um, some really cool moments like you know when CML was playing and had like a projector with like Black Lives Matter on the back. Cause like, that's actually right mm. at the beginning. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Right, yeah, I think uh, uh, George Floyd was, was murdered on like the 29th, the 30th, mm -hmm. like that. And so it was right, right there, yeah. Right, that was our last weekend. And we, f like, we felt that we had to do something at least. Mm. And it was amazing to see that there was artists that also felt the same way, um, you know, there's also Francesco Yates when he, he was singing Sugar, um, his hit, and at the very end he, he gives like Homebody uh, Music Festival a shout out. In the song. Oh, that's cool. Um, there was uh, Craig Stickland, just like angelic voice. Um, the Rec Laws, the way they, they the, you know, that was probably my favorite actually, the Rec Laws, because they mm. the night. Um, and it was just so perfect because every night we had like a, 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 a we, it wasn't like pre-recorded, but mm -hmm. like we knew what we were gonna do and, and close it. And the record was like, just like finished their song and was like, okay, goodbye, goodbye. And just closed the, <laughs> the laptop. <laughs> oh my God. Like by himself, just like, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say vibe, but no, they they did it. So. Yo, that's perfect. Yeah, that was great. And then uh, actually the same day, um, so Nate Hall was playing, um, and he had his friend Cal Modsley, who also both of those played, both of those guys played in the Rec Laws. Um, they were playing, and I'm actually neighbors with them. And during their set, my dad actually came flying behind them and was like hitting their tambourine on the sidewalk. Like, oh my gosh. That's legendary. That is legendary. Really funny. But yeah, there's there's a lot of great moments. I think, um, yeah, like I mentioned, I mean, just working with, with Ezra and working with Nick, Nav, Daniel, PK, um, Karen, like it's something so unique to be working with these people. And like, I never met Daniel or Karen. Oh, really? I met Daniel for the first time, like, last week. Whoa. It was the weirdest, was the weirdest thing, because I've spent so much time talking mm. to him. That's crazy. I've never seen him face-to-face -face until, like, two weeks ago. Damn. Yeah. Damn. But before we get into the, into the uh, last question, uh, tell me about, after the, the festival's done, you guys have that kind of monkey off your back, that release. Do you guys feel like you might do a second one? Um, even when things do open up? Because I, I think that there is something there. There is a bit of magic that you guys have created. So have you thought about doing a second one? It definitely has crossed our paths. Uh, yeah. we, we don't know what the next one will be. Um, there's a lot of interest, I can, I can say that. Um, we want to make sure that if we do it, we want to do it bigger and better. Okay. Um, and the first homebody. So, I mean, that's, I'll just leave it at that. And, you know, if, if anything happens, I'll be sure to let you know. But <laughs> so that it's, you know. All right. T TBD, TBD. Yeah. Um, this is the last one. What has been your favorite part of quarantine? A lot of people have been home for a long time and obviously it's not the best for some but there are, there are some perks of quarantine so what's been your favorite part I think I quarantine you know what I think it's probably been I, I used to like always like when I was younger I used to play video games all the time mm -hmm. and then I just stopped because I was so busy and COVID's allowed to like allow me to play a little bit more and just kind of like I, now it's more of a stress reliever like you know play a game of chill or you know 2k or whatever um and it just kind of gives me like you know a 15 little minute break as well as i've been a lot more active i've been playing soccer been okay i'm playing tennis which Damn. Like, i don't even have a tennis racket my tennis racket is my dad's from the 80s it's called Damn. like 
I've, Damn. Asked, I've asked like tennis players like who actually play if they know what Tolson is and they're like I have no idea so I'm using this whack ass tennis racket I've played 10 times in my life I'm terrible but I love it so <laughs> damn damn now we got to bring tennis back there's a, there's a tennis court by my crib that we've been meaning to go to and we always end up playing ball instead not, not you, you just gave hey, me the push yeah, you just gave me the push man. you'll probably kick my ass i'm so bad <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i haven't played tennis in years it's probably since i was like 15. Was it up like in quarantine like i'm not even joking i've literally played 11 times in my mm. entire life. damn damn yeah. all right so listen Maybe maybe we'll throw down one day. We'll we'll see what's up. We'll put something on the table. Play a little game of tennis. Um, yeah, let's <laughs> yeah, let, all, let all the people know where they can find you. Where can where can they follow your stuff? Where can they? Oh, you know, um, yeah, you can follow me. I just have Instagram really, so it's uh, at Lucas Lennon, uh, L U K A S, and then Lennon like John Lennon. Um, you, can, you can follow me. You can follow my artist Ezra Jordan or Chin and Jetty. Um, they got great music, love them to death. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And follow my journey, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. I want to thank you for dropping by. This has been another episode of Dropping Gems. I want to give a big shout out to Zone Two Three. I'm up is out right now, so please head over to his page. Get yourself an I'm up sweater. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, stay safe. Dude, thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me. It was an absolute pleasure.